Thanks also to Tom Wolf and the Brennan Center for Justice. They've been a really important clearinghouse for uh, lawyers and scholars who are looking into these issues and, and doing something about them in the courts all over the country. Uh, as, as Carol said, we're really short on time. I'm going to give you the 78 RPM version of this talk. Uh, I'm with the Public Interest Law Center in Philadelphia. Uh, we work on uh, a variety of issues. Voting uh, is, is, is at the core of what we do. Uh, a couple of cases that uh, have informed our redistricting work, we represented Amanda Holt, a 29-year-old piano teacher from Allentown, who uh, wondered why the uh, state Senate and state House maps looked so weird after the last reapportionment. Uh, and she came to my colleague Michael Churchill and we took that case up to the Supreme Court and won uh, and got a much improved, still flawed, but much improved map uh, that didn't split nearly as many local governments. Uh, we currently represent the League of Women Voters of Pennsylvania as well as 18 individual voters in a lawsuit challenging Pennsylvania's congressional plan. I'm going to talk about that, uh, that a bit more in a moment. I want to acknowledge Tom Ulrich, one of the 18 plaintiffs from the case who is uh, out here today. Uh, and uh, our other ones included um, the Applewhite case, which we brought along with uh, the ACLU of Pennsylvania Advancement Project and the law firm Arnold and Porter, which successfully uh, challenged Pennsylvania's voter ID law a few years ago. Um, so first, let me just talk about how redistricting works in Pennsylvania. I know most of you are already familiar with this, but the main point is that there's a very different process for the state legislative redistricting versus congressional. State legislature goes through that uh, five-member LRC, the Legislative Reapportionment Commission. Um, the congressional plan uh, is uh, passed just as a regular bill, um, goes through the House, goes through the Senate, signed by the governor, becomes law, just like any other bill. Uh, so they're very different processes. And the way you would litigate them is also very different. Um, there's a special provision in the Pennsylvania Constitution that sets up how you would challenge a plan uh, for the state senate or the state house. Um, you go directly to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. That's their beautiful courtroom just down the street. Uh, you don't uh, uh, go through a trial court first. And it happens at a hyper-accelerated pace. Um, so, uh, and, and every decade when a new plan is enacted, someone sues. Uh, the first time was in after the 1970 census, Arlen Specter was actually the plaintiff in that lawsuit. Um, and every, uh, every decade since, people have challenged. Amanda Holt's case was actually the only one that's ever succeeded uh, under the Pennsylvania Constitution in 1968 that we currently have, uh, the only successful suit. And it was based on um, the splitting of local governments. The Pennsylvania Constitution says that the, uh, the state senate and state house plans should, to the maximum extent possible, keep intact local government units like counties and municipalities. Um, this is the map that was originally passed by the LRC in 2011 for the state senate. And as you'll see, it has a lot of those wacky shapes that are the hallmark of, uh, of, of a gerrymandered plan. And um, Amanda Holt, as I, as I mentioned, a 29-year-old piano teacher in Allentown with no experience in this area and just working with like Microsoft Excel and Google Maps, made a new map. This is the map that Amanda made. Uh, and she said, well, why can't it look more like this? This keeps way more counties intact. This keeps way more towns and wards intact. Uh, and, and the Supreme Court agreed with her, four to three, uh, struck down this plan, sent it back to the LRC to try again. They came back with a new plan that was a significant improvement over this plan, still nowhere near as good as this. Uh, the Supreme Court, we challenged it a second time, the Supreme Court didn't let us have our, our second win, uh, and they upheld the, the second plan. Um, in Pennsylvania, there's, there's also been a history of litigating uh, about the congressional plans. Um, Tom mentioned the Veith versus Jubilee case, which went up to the US Supreme Court about the plan that we had in the previous decade. Um, that plan was also challenged in state court in a case called Erfur v. Commonwealth, in a case called Erfur v. Commonwealth. Both of those cases, uh, the, the, the plaintiffs lost those cases uh, for, for somewhat similar reasons. In both cases, the, the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania and the Supreme Court of the United States um, weren't yet willing to buy the idea that there was some way that you could prove that a plan had too much of a partisan slant. Um, in the years since those cases came down, and Tom spoke about, about this some, um, uh, there's been a flurry of activity, uh, uh, everyone from statisticians to political scientists trying to come up with a way to, uh, to formally show that a map uh, goes too far, is too partisan, 
And that has uh, driven a lot of the current interest in lawsuits in, in this decade. So this is Pennsylvania's current congressional plan. I saw there's an easel out there with a, with a bigger reproduction of this. Um, and it has 18 seats, as I said. And this is the plan that is the uh, subject of the lawsuit that, that I'm counsel in, along with Arnold and Porter K. Scholler, uh, League of Women Voters uh, of Pennsylvania versus Commonwealth. And um, it, this is a case that we filed in state court. Um, the, the Whitford case, the, the Maryland and North Carolina cases that Tom mentioned, those have all been filed in federal court with the U.S. Supreme Court having the final say, and they raise claims under the U.S. Constitution. Um, our case is, in, in some respects, pretty similar to those cases. It, it involves somewhat similar analysis and theories, but in other important ways it's different. Um, and one of those ways is it arises under the Pennsylvania Constitution. Um, and, for and, and the Pennsylvania Supreme Court has interpreted our Constitution as being more protective of certain rights than the U.S. Constitution. So, for example, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court has said that when the Pennsylvania Constitution guarantees freedom of expression and freedom of association, those rights are even more protected than the protections that the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution provides. Uh, and so uh, we feel that the map currently uh, in place was done with the intent and the effect of penalizing members of one party for their political associations and their political activities. Uh, and that, that violates, uh, well, probably violates the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, but it even more assuredly violates the freedom of expression, freedom of association guarantees in the Pennsylvania Constitution. Uh, we, I, Representative Samuelson showed you, uh, mentioned how the bill came into being. This is how the bill originally was introduced in the legislature in September of 2011. It just says the first district is composed of a portion of this commonwealth. The second district is composed of a portion of this commonwealth. They inserted the language at the last, uh, the last day. Uh, here's what the actual final bill looks like. It's just page after page of lists of counties and wards and divisions. Um, that's the actual sausage that got made in the sausage factory. Um, and uh, most famous of that is the 7th Congressional District, the Goofy Kicking Donald Duck District. Um, just to highlight some of the absurdities in that, you know, it, it's, it, it has these big areas that are connected by these tiny, narrow isthmuses. And uh, one of them is a place called Creed Seafood and Steaks uh, out in Montgomery County. So the, the 7th District is, it actually narrows down to this restaurant and then broadens back out again. Uh, Another one is Brandywine Gastrointestinal Associates, which is an endoscopy center. Uh, so the seventh district basically includes just that building and its parking lot. Uh, uh, and and it, you know, it's it's funny maps, but it's also uh, you know you can show uh, with some pretty hard math that there are serious flaws with the current program, the current plan. Um, this just breaks down. Uh, what the election results looked like in 2012. You'd see similar numbers for 2014 and 2016. Um, we have 18 congressional districts, and the map is drawn in such a way that 13 out of the 18 are, uh, go to, go to, are held by Republican members of Congress, no matter what the election looks like statewide. So in 2012, when President Obama carried Pennsylvania by a comfortable margin, it was 13 to 5. When, when Governor Wolf won two years later, 13 to 5. When uh, Trump won two years after that, 13 to 5. So it's really not responsive to any broad shifts in, in people's uh, ballot uh, activities. Um, so there are five districts that are held by Democrats, and as you'll see, the Democrats win these districts by big margins, you know, 85%, 91%. Uh, you know, so they, they, the second congressional district, Congressman Evans' district, um, is, is regularly won by something like a 90 to 10 margin by Democrats because uh, they've been designed to be so clustered into that district. Uh, the other 13 districts are, are won by uh, comfortable but much smaller margins by Republican candidates, you know, 57%, 63%. Uh, statewide in 2012, the Democrats won an average of 77% of the votes in the districts they won, and the Republicans won an average of 59% in the districts they won. And that's really the math, like the, the you know the nitty gritty of how this works. Statewide vote share, uh, Democrats got 50.8% of the votes statewide in congressional races in 2012. 50.8% of the votes, um, but they only got I. I five out of 13 seats, which I think is about 28% of the seats in our congressional delegation. Um, so uh, as Tom mentioned, there are a variety of standards people have proposed 
to <laughs> evaluate this. Wisconsin, uh, that lawsuit, the Whitford v. Gill lawsuit, challenges state legislative plans in Wisconsin, and they have a plan that is just off the charts bad by all these measures. Um, Pennsylvania's number one woo, at uh, having a uh, unfairly slanted congressional plan uh, by, by pretty much all those same measures. We're either the worst in the country or maybe the second or third worst on some of the measures. Um, the efficiency gap is just one of those measures. It uh, looks at how many votes are wasted on the Democratic side versus how many on the Republican side. And by wasted votes, it means either votes over and above the 50% plus one needed to win a district or votes for the losing candidate. Uh, and we had a uh, 1.7 million wasted votes for Democrats versus 700,000 wasted votes for Republicans in our last congressional election. 20.4% efficiency gap, by far the highest for any congressional plan in the country in that election. Um, another standard that we are uh, proposing in our lawsuit, just one of many, is uh, looking at simulated maps. So an expert can use a computer program to draw hundreds or thousands of maps that uh, are uh, all consistent with normal redistricting principles like having contiguous compact districts and so on. And then you look, well, what's the partisan slant of these plans? And when you run that analysis, you're going to end up with a lot of plans that are going to have a you know, 9 to 9 Republican to Democratic split, maybe quite a few 10, 8 or 8, 10 seats. Maybe in a very few plans that have 11 to 7, like way at the far ends of that bell curve, you might have one or two of those. But you're never going to get to 13 to 5. That's just, uh, that's just not going to happen. And there's really no way to explain it other than uh, that it was done on purpose to, uh, to punish people for, uh, for their political associations. Um, I want to mention lastly, and again, I'm, I'm doing this really fast, there was another lawsuit filed just last week in federal court in Pennsylvania. It's not the same as our lawsuit, it's, it's different folks doing it. Um, they, it's, they have brought a, a, a creative, novel legal theory that's not been litigated elsewhere. I, I would say it's a very ambitious legal theory in the, in the sense that it would require the courts to, to um, uh, really uh, do something new, but it, um, it challenges the Pennsylvania Congressional Plan under the Elections Clause of the U.S. Constitution, um, and a, a key difference between that case and ours, or one of many, is that, um, is that our case, we feel that we can show, need to show that the plan intentionally uh, discriminated against members of one party. Uh, and that, that they not only tried to discriminate, but they also succeeded, that it had the effect of discriminating against uh, that party's members, uh, and that there was no neutral justification to, uh, to legitimize that intent and that effect. Um, and um, the federal case that was just filed seeks to prove just intent, that there was an intent to discriminate, and under their theory, there's no need to prove uh, the effect of the justification uh, prongs of the, the legal theory. Uh, so just want to mention two different cases. Um, I can talk more in our breakout group later on about the status of these cases. Um, it's, it's unclear how quickly um, the court, in, in our case, is going to move on the case. Um, we've asked the court to hear it on a very quick basis uh, so that it can be decided in time for the 2018 primary. Um, if, if the court doesn't uh, do that, um, we still think that there's abundant time to get a decision in time for the 2020 primary, which will also be conducted under the plan. Um, in any event, uh, by winning this suit and getting a new map either for 2018 or 2020 will not only, you know, hopefully improve those elections, but also uh, set a new standard that will govern how Pennsylvania's legislature will, uh, will draw the maps in the future, unless I'm wrong, and I really hope I'm wrong, because I hope that the Senate Bill 22 or House Bill 722 passes, um, and we will have a, a, a new system in effect for 2021. Uh, and that you know, litigation is great, but um, but really amending the Constitution is by far and away the best long-term fix. Even if we win our case, um, it's not going to change that process. Um, amending the Constitution would would really just rewrite the basic underpinnings of how this functions and give us a truly independent way of drawing a map. Uh, that's the, the most successful, best, longest lasting uh, solution. And I'm uh, really grateful to all of you who are working to make that happen. Thank you.